Nisqually State Park in Washington State. It's on the western side of Mount Rainier, heading toward Ashford, the Ashford entrance. I haven't been here before, I'm just exploring. I saw on the map that there's maybe some access to the river. I also read online that it's uh, popular with people who ride horses. So I'm thinking it's kind of a big sprawling park. I'm just out for a walk and looking for something interesting to paint. We've been getting a lot of rain lately. A little bit of snow as well, a lot of snow in the mountains. So things are pretty muddy out here, but that's okay. I got the right shoes for it. I get asked once in a while, do I ever get artist block? Do I ever have a like a blockage where I'm not inspired or I'm not excited about what I'm doing or where my work isn't coming out well? And of course, things never quite come out as I want them. There's always something that I feel could be improved upon. But I don't really get blocked anymore. When I was younger, I would sometimes almost feel a depression and just a lack of enthusiasm to get started on my artwork or maybe a little bit of fear. And what I found is that it wasn't really lack of inspiration. I'm so easily inspired by nature. I see a scene and I instantly start thinking, how could I paint that? I want to capture it and share it. Well, I've been walking for about three miles and I couldn't really break through the brush to the river. Um, when I finally got close to the river, it was a really steep bank down to the river and I didn't feel like scrambling down that with my painting gear. But I found this little scene on the way back toward the truck and I'm gonna take a break here, have a cup of coffee and look around a bit, think about how the light's gonna travel over the next hour or so and maybe try to find a scene to paint here. Spring leaves are starting to pop out those magenta colors, magenta and orange. I think that's some new spring growth. It is almost March. It's, it's the end of February. Well, I wandered quite a bit around Nisqually State Park and I just could not find a scene that I really wanted to paint. I found a couple pretty scenes but no place to stand or right in the middle of the trail or too windy. So on my drive back home I, I came across this little area which has some kind of wide open fields. A little view of Mount Rainier in the background kind of shrouded in clouds at the moment. So I'm walking around here looking for something to paint. I think this would be the scene for today. It's a little bit of a hike to get here, but wow, is it pretty. You've got these interesting moss-covered deciduous trees over here, and this light value grassy pasture leading off to that more distant pine-covered hill, and then right behind that, Mount Rainier peeking through the clouds. Now it's supposed to have some we're supposed to have some cloud breaks this afternoon. I hope so. That could really be pretty if the sky breaks open and we get a little more view of the mountain. Well, this is really beautiful as well. It's got a little bit of a creek coming toward me, leading the eye toward the far distant hills and the mountain. So I'm going to go sit in the truck for a minute and play with these pictures I took on my iPhone and see which image just has the biggest impact on me and then come back and set up and paint. It's hard to decide. There's a lot of subject matter around here, but this is really beautiful as well. And it has the added benefit of the little creek leading the eye into the distance toward the mountain. 
I'm going to paint from here. I like this spot and this is roughly the scene I'm going to paint. I'll zoom in a bit. Something like that. Um, and hopefully the mount, mountain will make an appearance and I can include it as well. I'm going to modify the, the scene a bit. I'm going to take this little creek and make it more visible in this view. I'm going to borrow the view that I have from closer to the little creek. I'm going to make it come out further into this pasture and then maybe go back out or maybe just go right off the, the panel. I'll have to see what feels right as I'm doing the wash as I'm adjusting the value pattern. But yeah, I think this will be a nice place. I've got a nice flat spot, nice grassy area to stand. It's pretty dry. Okay, here's the charcoal sketch. I hope you can see it. It's pretty light on there. I did have the one-third lines in at first, just very lightly, just to help me with the composition. I like to put the points of interest on the one-third lines or near the intersections. I'm not too rigorous. I know you can be off of that and still have a very strong composition, but it just kind of helps me. It also helps me sketch in quickly when I have uh, the picture on my iPhone with those one-third lines as well. And I have a video or two where I've shown how I do that trick. But I have the river. I've expanded it greatly from what I'm actually seeing in the scene. I, I can only catch a little corner of it here from this viewpoint, but I have a picture on my iPhone that I can look at that shows the river. I want it to take up a good quarter of the panel here, so it's going to play a much bigger role. I've got this kind of middle ground pasture sloping down toward the river, and so this should be kind of an interesting center of interest. I've got a beautiful old moss covered tree here. I've got some kind of rough red bushes in a line here and in a line here leading back to the river and then those same bushes coming forward. There's some tall grasses, there's some green grass so that'll be kind of fun to play with. I'm going to keep try to keep it really loose and just suggest it. I've got a couple trees here, more of those moss covered trees, some of them with just the earliest start of leaves coming out when the sun hits them they almost get a pinkish magenta like color at the tips of the branches which is really pretty i've just hinted at the mountain in the background i can't see it very well right now to even know what to draw other than the ultramarine blue hills in the far, far distance, and then a couple outcroppings of rock that aren't buried in snow. At this, from this viewpoint, the snow and the sky are the same really bright value, and then the clouds are just one step, just a hint darker, and they're kind of a warmish gray, a blue, blue gray, but with just a hint of a lizard and crimson. So, Unless something more dramatic happens with the sky, I'll just do that. I'll just suggest the mountain with a couple ridge lines of rock and the cloud formation in front of it, and then those blue, far distant hills. I'm going to try to keep the distant mountains very high in value, higher in value than what I'm actually seeing here, because I want to really push them back. And then this next layer of pine trees, they'll still be very high in value, but darker than that far distant set of mountains. And then as I move forward, everything will get deeper, higher contrast, and richer in color chroma. That's the plan at least. I'll see how far I can get. It's a little windy today, but not too cold, so I should be okay for a couple hours to do a painting. I'm going to go with an 11 by 14 inch panel. This time, it's a nice scene, but I'm not quite sure I want to go any bigger than a, an 11 by 14. I'll start with the turpentine wash. I'll just kind of scrub in the tones from the scene. 
As usual, I'll start out with this old bristle brush. It's about an inch wide, nice and broken in. For the turpentine wash, looking out at the scene, I want to use colors that I would be happy to see in the finished painting, kind of showing through the final layers. I also like to go lighter in value, so not quite as dark as my painting will end up. That gives me some flexibility. And I like to go warmer, just because I think, because so much of what is in the landscape is cooler, especially on a winter day here in the Pacific Northwest. Lots of blues and greens, lots of cool reds, um, alizarin and crimson. I want to go warmer if I can, so toward the yellow and red end of the scale. So I think it'll be a nice contrast with the, the final colors. Alright, I'm going to let that set up just a little bit. Since it's warmer, it is drying pretty quick. I'm going to take that same big brush and wipe it out with a rag, try to get the wet turpentine out of the brush, and uh, just kind of blend a little bit in some areas. You can see that I played with the paint a bit. I moved it around by adding more turpentine, adding more paint to try to get an interesting abstract pattern, something that appealed to me. I brought that river in and then back out and kind of enhanced that far pasture and just hinted at the mountain by adding more turpentine to lighten the value. The foreground is pretty rough, pretty wild. I may just leave it like that and just hint at the, the foreground. I may want to put it into a little deeper shadow when I get it back into the studio that might be a little more interesting with the, the bright mountain in the background and that bright pasture and the highlights on the river but we'll see I'm gonna keep my eye on the, the sky maybe I'll get some interesting atmospheric effects now I'll take a step back from it have a cup of coffee and think about my next steps Got some colors mixed up here. This is the shadow in the that distant pine covered hill. This is the light on those pines. This is the shadow and the light in the deciduous trees on those pine on that forested hill. And then here's that far pasture. Kind of a richer yellow and a more grayed out yellow, both about the same value. You can see this is all pretty light value and all pretty close to one value range. Maybe two. One and two. Here is a little color mixed for those deciduous trees that are moss covered. I'm just going to draw in the trunks of the trees and then quickly, very loosely paint on the moss covering the trunks and the branches. And then here's some darker, richer shades for the banks of the river so I'll, I'll work my way forward I did mix up a few colors for the sky as well and for the light on the mountain there was a moment there where the sky had a really rich lavender the clouds in the sky had a really rich lavender and the mountain had kind of a yellow highlight and a pinkish highlight toward the center so I'm just gonna jot those color patches down that I matched just so I remember it
the edge is soft. I'm trying to use a big brush. I'm also spreading the paint on pretty thin right now. I want some of that underpainting to show through. Some of those sparks of warmer, lighter value. Add some depth and add some energy. about myself is it's more a matter of getting worn out if I'm not sleeping well if I'm not eating well if I'm drinking too much alcohol if I'm not drinking enough water my energy level just drops and that can kind of translate into a feeling of uh, uh, almost like depression or despair so as long as I'm taking care of myself I don't really run into a situation where I feel blocked Sometimes it's hard to get enough sleep. Sometimes when I'm busy traveling or working on a tough commission, putting in a lot of hours. Back when I used to work full time as well as trying to build my art career, I would burn the candle at both ends. So it was more of just kind of wearing myself out, not really being blocked. So watch those things you might find it helpful make sure you're getting enough sleep try to eat right drink enough water and if you still feel blocked or if you still feel a lack of inspiration a lack of uh, excitement about getting started on your art then maybe ask yourself if you're drawing or painting what you want to does your subject matter excite you? If you're kind of bored with it, if it's not challenging any longer, if you're just not excited about the subject, that might be the problem as well. But mixed up here for the foreground. This should finish the painting off, at least as far as I'm going to get here. I've got some green for the green grass. A darker, richer, a little more vibrant sap green and some cad yellow. And I'm going to use this cad yellowish green as it comes closer toward me. I've got some really beautiful grayish lavenders, ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson for the bushes on the bank of the river close to me. And then I've got some of the sky reflection for the water. And then the yellow grasses here. Uh, pale, more vibrant yellow. Pale, more grayed out yellow. And then uh, one with a little more yellow ochre in it to give it some strength as it comes closer to me. I'll use a big brush now and just try to rough it in quickly.
the sun never did break through. It stayed cloudy and got cold as well. Temperatures really dropped. But beautiful place. I love all the bird sounds going on. I think I hear a little owl now hooting in the trees somewhere. So really beautiful spot. I'll be back. Let me show you the painting. Here's where it ended up. The light never really did break through on the mountain. Um, so it's really kind of a, a somber scene. Um, I'm not sure if I want to leave it that way or if I want to try to up the contrast a bit. I like the this background hill of trees here. I think that's really loose and and pretty effective, conveys a lot of detail. I like the way this path is kind of leading into the slope, and I do think the colors match the scene pretty well. But I think the river needs some adjustment. I don't quite like how it just kind of falls off the page. I think it needs to maybe, I'm not sure. I need to think about it and, and play with the composition a bit. I either, I either need to open it up more and make it more of a feature because I don't I'm not liking how it comes in and then goes back out so quickly so I need to think about that I may adjust it in my studio or I may leave it and try it again another day but I'll throw the end result up on my website so take a look if you want to support me please visit my website sign up for my newsletter Share this video with your friends. I appreciate you joining me today. I hope you enjoy these videos. If so, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the trail.